right. Thanks, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A um, couple of announcements. Really just one. Uh, two. Um, the first one is this. This Wednesday is our last Lenten uh, service for the year. Um, the service starts at 630. There's dinner at 515. And this week is actually being catered in. Um, by Sim Steakhouse, so maybe that's a, an impetus for you to, I don't know, come and have dinner. Uh, it doesn't matter to me either way, whatever you want to do on that, but service starts at 6.30. Uh, the other thing is BBS, um, big highlight of our summer here, we're looking for uh, volunteers, right? We're looking for volunteers for that. If you can help out, if you're interested in any way, it doesn't just magically happen. As I said in first service, it doesn't just appear. It seems like it does, um, and it's a lot of fun, but we do need people to help with that. So if you can help out in any way, uh, there's a sign-up sheet out there. Also, you can just contact Melanie Hensley. She's on, in the online directory. Get a hold of her um, and let her know you want to help out. So that's all I have for you in terms of announcements. Let's stand and let's begin our time with prayer. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for who you are, for all that you've done for us. Lord, bless our time this morning that we might be a blessing to you and a blessing to others, that we might take your word out, Lord, uh, into this world and share it with those who are lost and hurting. Father, you are a good and gracious God, and we thank you for the gift that you've given us through your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Oh, we look to the sun, set our on Skies above, love reaching out. 
Go ahead and have a seat, everybody. That was awesome. All right. So we had our, uh, our class today and um, our adult Bible study, and we're talking about Lazarus, the resurrection and stuff, and um, somebody brought up, uh, and I agreed with her 100%. She goes, ah, oh, because obviously the conversation went to a lot of different places. She said, it just, it's so disheartening. I, I can't remember the exact word she used, but so disheartening when people say, um, well, I hope I'm saved, right? I'm like, yeah. How disheartening is that? She said, I get it if, if, you're, if you're not a Christian. Or I can see non-Christians saying, oh, I hope I'm saved. Like, yeah, of course. But if you, if you are a Christian, if you are in the body of Christ, never, never should those words cross your, your lips. You should never say, I hope I'm saved. Our stance should always be, praise God, I am saved. Right? Yes, praise God, I'm saved. That's what it should always be. And the same thing with our sins, right? We talked about that in there too. It, the whole conversation went different places. But um, the idea that, that we can come in here and we can confess our sins. And yet so many of us can still walk out with baggage. We can still walk out with guilt. We can still walk out with shame. That doesn't mean that we can't walk out with remorse saying, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Right? And I need to make amends. Of course. Right? That's what we ought to do. But to leave here still with the burden of sin on us. Leave here thinking, oh, man, that guilt still weighs me down. We're, we've missed the promise of Christ. We're not hearing what he says. We're not, we're not grasping the truth of the gospel. That your sins are forgiven. All of them. Every single sin. Jesus died on the cross, what, 2,000 years ago. And on that day, he died for your sins. And he erased them all. We go through confession and absolution so we can recount those, right? And say, yes, Jesus, I, you know, I am a sinner. I do struggle. And I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you that you've forgiven me. And Jesus, empower me how to live the way you want me to live. You call me to live. That's why we do this. So as we go through this today, man, above, if you hear nothing else today, man, really, if you hear nothing else today, Hear this, that your sins are forgiven. When you walk out of here, don't walk out with guilt and burden and shame. Walk out of here in life, knowing that what Jesus did was enough. Please, above all else, walk out of here with that. Because you've missed it if you don't. Let's confess our sins. Lord, as we come before you this morning, we, we do not tell you something that you don't already know. And we don't tell you something that you have already haven't died for. We come to you and we, we do confess that we are sinners, Lord, that, that we, we stray from your path, that we haven't lived how you call us to do. And when we come to you, Lord, we, we do. We, we say, forgive us. But what we're doing really is saying, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for what you've already given to us. Thank you that you, you have washed away our sins. Lord, we are sorry for them. We're sorry we've walked our sinful way. But we know you've redeemed. We know you've saved. We know you've forgiven us. So Lord, I pray for everybody here that they would know that truth and reality. That none of us would walk out of here today with, with shame or guilt or, or sin still burdening us. But we'd walk out in grace knowing that the cross is for us. That the empty tomb means that our sins have been forgiven, that we live in you now. So Lord, thank you for giving us what we so don't deserve. For giving us a new life. Help us to believe that, to trust that good news, and to live it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are your sins forgiven? Yes. Yes, 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 and yes, and yes, and yes. Please don't walk out of here with the burden of sin and burden of shame on you going, man, Jesus died for all of them. We are new in Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing.
If your troubles heavy hearted come to Jesus and find your peace If you're run down Whatever we need, you are for us. What do we do with that? How, how, do, we, how do we thank you for that? How do we, man, how, I, I don't know. I don't know. But Lord, I pray for myself and I pray for everybody here that, that, that we would just live for you then. You're everything for us. So may we now live for you. Shine your light. Proclaim your truth. Be salt in this world. Be gracious. Lord, you are everything for us. May we now live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and have a seat. So that's the, uh, the current picture of the cross, uh, the, the rocks as our pile grows. If you're new with us today, um, hopefully you did. You grabbed a rock. It wasn't just a joke. Grab a rock as you come, as you come in. Uh, the, the series is stones, and you know the idea behind it is stones in the Bible often, often can represent our sins, and that's what uh, the series is about, how they represent our sins, but more importantly, the series is also about how Jesus, His grace removes our stones of sin. Um, 
and that's the good news we have, right? And so as that pile grows, we'll see, um, we'll see a change in that pile come Easter, and, and we'll praise God for that. So um, here we are. Uh, Matthew 16 is our text for today. There's the, uh, the page number there if you're using the Pew Bible. I'm a big fan of the Bible, really am. I encourage you to bring your own. Um, so if you didn't, that's fine. Use the Pew Bible. If you don't have your own Bible, I'm happy to buy you one. Um, but I just think you should have it. You can dog ear it. You can write in it. You can take notes in it. It's just yours, right? So I'm a big fan of you bringing your own Bible. If you brought your own Bible today, uh, 6,000 points. 6,000 points. I know. Right? If God could be gracious, why not? All right. Matthew 16, starting in verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. All right. So the Tibetan monks, or sorry, not monks, the Tibetan Buddhists, uh, they believe in the transmutation of the soul, which means simply this, that when somebody dies, that their soul immediately goes into the, the body of somebody who was just born. Uh, so if I were to die right now, then my body would go immediately into the soul of somebody else who was born at the exact, mo- exact moment I died. Um, this becomes really important for them when their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, dies. Because when the, the Dalai Lama dies, at that exact moment that he dies, Whoever was, what boy was born at that exact moment, that boy is now the Dalai Lama. So they have to go find that boy, that boy born at that time, whatever time it was that the Dalai Lama died, they find that boy, and now that boy is the Dalai Lama, because that's where his soul went. And, they, and everybody knows it, right? The family that the baby's taken from, they know that boy is now the Dalai Lama, the, the village, the town, the city, wherever he's, he comes from, they know that boy is now the Dalai Lama. Judaism, Judaism is different. That's not how they work. Right? Judaism believed that God was going to send an anointed king. They believed that God was going to send the Messiah. What they didn't know was who it would be. Right? They didn't know who it was going to be. They, they weren't exactly sure when he would come. Right? All they knew was that this, this king, this Messiah, would free God's people and bring peace to the world. That's what they knew. But they didn't know who for sure it would be. And so in first century Judaism, when Jesus is alive, there's many people, many people popping up saying, I'm it. I'm the Messiah. I'm the anointed one. I'm the one to come. But they all proved to be false. Except Jesus. What do we do with Jesus? Because here's this guy who, born of a carpenter, so they thought, Born in Nazareth, so they assumed, and he can do some really amazing things, right? I mean, he, he, he heals people, he heals the blind, and he makes the lame walk. He, he raises the dead. He feeds thousands with a couple of loaves and some fish. He speaks with authority. He teaches us somebody who, who we've never heard teach like this before. Who, who is this Jesus? Who do we think he is? Well, Jesus decides to find out. He wants to know, who do you say I am? And so he goes to his disciples. Verse 13, Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. That's insightful. I mean, the, the people kind of had it going on, didn't they? I mean, he's doing these pretty amazing things. Th- this guy, Jesus, he, he's doing some pretty spectacular things, so he must be somebody pretty spectacular. He must, be, he must be Elijah come back, 
Or it must be John the Baptist come back from the dead. Maybe he's Jeremiah or some other great prophet. That's who the people say, say you are, Jesus. So insightful, but wrong. Right? Good guesses, but none of them are right. Now, I think Jesus has a pretty good sense of humor. And I think, I think, here's where he used it. Right? See, we, we read the text, and we just read it straight through, right? So we assume the next question just came one right after the other. And it really, very well could have. But I can see Jesus kind of messing with the disciples a little bit here, right? So he says, hey, who do people say that I am? They say, well, Elijah, one of the prophets, right? Uh, John the Baptist. Oh, okay. And I can see the disciples going, sweet. Because it's easy to answer for somebody else, isn't it? It's easy for me to go say, hey, Billy Bob thinks this. That's no skin off my teeth. If he's wrong, I don't care. Because that's what he believes. So the disciples are probably thinking, yeah, we answered that question. We get brownie marks for that. But we don't have to put ourselves out there. Right? We don't have to give the answer. So, awesome. And here's where I think Jesus was kind of, you know, I think, kind of messing with them. He goes, hmm. And maybe they just sat down for a while. Maybe they walked a little bit more. But he kind of lets the disciples be at ease, right? They, they, they think the pressure's off because they answered the question. So, ah, that's cool. We can just go over, hang out and go back to what we were doing. And here comes question number two, right? Here comes question number two, and Jesus says, um, okay, fellas, but who do you say I am? See, he catches them off guard now because they thought they were free, but now they've got to answer that question. Now they have to answer it for themselves. Whoa, whoa. You, you, you want to know what we think? You're asking us our opinion? You want us to voice our opinion on who you are? You want us to say who we think you are? Hey, Jesus, um, I don't know if you remember, we're really not the going out on a limb type of people. Right? And the disciples really weren't. They weren't really put themselves out there. If you, remember, if you go back a couple of chapters to Matthew 14, the disciples hop in a boat to go across the lake. And as they're going across the lake... Jesus starts walking on the water, and he catches up to him. And he catches up to him, and they go, hey, th whoa, it's a ghost. And Jesus says, I th I'm not a ghost. I'm Jesus. Come on out. And guess how many people got out of the boat? Only one. They hunker down. Right? They're going to hunker down in that boat. They're not really let's go out on a limb type of people. And that's what we have today, too. Right? Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And we have stone cold silence. Nothing except for one. Only Peter gets out of the boat and walks to Jesus. Only Peter answers Jesus' question and says, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Only Peter is the one brave enough to do those things. Only Peter. Everybody else kind of hunkers down, doesn't get out, doesn't say a word. And what I find funny about all of this is we give grief to Peter. Don't we? We give grief to Peter all the time. We say, well, yeah, sure, he got out of the boat, but what happened? He sank. Oh, sure, he proclaimed Jesus as Messiah, but what happened? Well, he denied him later on. We, we give all this grief to Peter, and we say nothing about the 11. The other 11 who did nothing. The other 11 who didn't even bother to get out of the boat. The other 11 who couldn't even open their mouths to venture a guess about who Jesus was. We'll give Peter crap all day. We won't say a word about the other 11. And that's the church today. That's the church today. We're happy to be the 11. We're happy to just stay in the boat. We're happy just to stay quiet. Come to me. No, 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 I'm good. Who am I? I'm not going to say. The world's dying for somebody. Somebody to step out in faith. The world's dying for somebody to give voice to Jesus. And the church, <coughs> we're happy to stay in the boat. We're happy to remain silent. We're happy to be the 11. Hey, I get it. I get it. Peter sank. I get it. Peter denies Jesus later on. But by golly, he stepped out. He, he said something. Doesn't this world need that? Doesn't our world need people to step out in faith? Doesn't our world need people to give voice to the, to the salvation we have in Jesus Christ? 
Because if they don't hear from us, they're not going to hear it. We are the church. We hold the gospel. We know who Jesus is. And yet how often do we stay in the boat? How often do we keep our mouths shut? Let's push forward in our text here. Peter says, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Man, that is awesome. I mean, no, no offense to Dwayne Johnson, right? But Jesus calls Peter the rock. And no offense to the Catholic Church, but the, the church was not built on Peter. The church was built on the confession of Peter. You are the Messiah. Peter is taking his stone, his rock, his confession, and he's putting it on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. He's saying, you are the Messiah. And just as Peter did that, so more and more people did it after him. Paul, Augustine, Mother Teresa, Bonhaver, they stuck their rock on the cornerstone of Christ and said, let my voice be heard. Let the world see me. I am with you, Jesus. I am stepping out and I'm speaking up. You think it was easy for him? You think it was easy for him to, to, to speak to, to the crowds who didn't, who, who didn't know, who didn't believe, to those who hated? You think it was easy? No, most of those people were, were killed. Most martyred. It wasn't easy for them, but they stepped out and they did it. And no, it won't be easy for us either. But the world needs us to step out, not shrink back. They need us to speak up and not shut up. They need us to be Jesus in this world. Now is not the time for us to be passive in our faith. Now is the time for us to be passionate about the gospel. Because the world needs to hear it. There's a world drowning out there in false and unbelief. They need somebody to step out of the boat to show them who Jesus is. There's a world that is dying to hear the truth of the gospel. They need somebody who's going to be willing to speak up. Somebody's going to give voice to it. Somebody's going to say, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Savior. Let me tell you about who he is. The world needs that. And like I said, if you're not going to, if I'm not going to, they won't hear it. We've got to step out. We've got to step up. We've got to speak out. Our Lord and Savior gave everything for us that we would know him, that we would be his. And that gift he gives to us, he wants everybody to have. But for all we're going to do is hunker down the boat and wait for the waves to subside. If all we're going to do is keep our mouths shut and let somebody else answer the question, where does salvation come from? If that's all we're going to do, then this world will burn. We have got to speak up. We have got to step out. We've got to be the church of Jesus Christ. We've got to be his voice and his hands and his feet. The world's waiting for it. The world's waiting for it. And they need it. And Jesus actually is counting on us. Let's go be his feet. Let's go be his voice. Let us stand up. Let us step out. Let us speak up in this world for Jesus Christ. And that's probably enough for today. So you're holding a rock in your hand, right? And I, like we've done every week, 
You've been invited to come up and drop your rock in this basket if you want. Certainly you don't have to. It's up to you. Today, when you come up for communion, you're confessing a belief. You're confessing a belief in Jesus Christ, that he is your Lord, that he is your Savior, that in this meal you receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, but also the strength of your faith. That you might be his voice in this world, that he would empower you to go be Jesus in this world. So when you walk up with your rock today, you're going to make a confession with that as well, if you choose to drop it in there. Actually, you're going to make two confessions. The first one is simply this. If you drop it in there, you're going to be confessing that, you know what, oftentimes I, I, I've sat back. Jesus, oftentimes, I've shut up. I haven't confessed you as Lord and Savior. And that's part of the confession. I'm dropping in there, Lord. I, I, I want to be different. I want to stand up. I want to speak out. And also by dropping your rock in there, you're saying, Lord, I want, I want my rock to be added to the cornerstone. I want my confession to be heard. So empower me. Empower me. Give me passion to proclaim you as Jesus, the Son of God, Savior of the world, Lover of my soul. We continue now with the words of institution. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And after he'd given thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and drink all of you. This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do is offered you drink it in remembrance of me. We pray now together the Lord's Prayer is printed on the screen. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you're communing uh, this morning using one of the kits, we'll commune you first. Uh, if you're new with us and you're using a kit, I would encourage you, uh, a little tip here is kind of snap that and it releases that, that clear tab. Pull that back. Jesus says, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Pull the next one. Jesus says, take and eat. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As we've done throughout this series, uh, instead of going on the outside and coming up to receive communion, you'll enter from this uh, center aisle, come up, drop your rock if you're going to, receive communion, and then head back. This side, you walk through the first pew and put your cup at the end of the pew. Uh, there's a, a container there. This side, you'll come out the front, and the container for the cups is on uh, at the end of that first pew. Uh, and we'll start on this side, the right-hand side of the, the uh, sanctuary. Just follow the pew ahead of you, and just uh, make a continuous line. <laughs>
Please rise. And now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Thank you. 
God, you want to bring glory to his name, then don't be passive about your faith, right? Be passionate about the gospel. Share the good news. Tell somebody about Jesus. That brings glory to God. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're supposed to do. That's who we are. We are his lights and his ambassadors. So let's go. Let's step out. Let's speak up. Let's share Jesus with this world. Amen? Amen. 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 Go. Do it.